something on the record. Hip hop at first was not called hip hop. You had four elements that were in the street and the people who practiced those elements felt no comradeship or kinship with the others. A b-boy was busy being a b-boy. A graph artist or an aerosol cat was busy doing that. He couldn't go there and watch his cats backspin that. That was like, he, he might watch it, but he was in his head. A DJ's busy DJ. And an MC and a DJ had a rapport because one, but actually that came later where the MC and the DJ worked together. Mm-hmm. The, 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 the MC came out of the DJ, I think, yeah. right? At first, when you went to these clubs, when you went to these things, the MC wasn't important. The DJ was important, and the reason they were important, people did not go to listen to that stuff. They went to dance, to pick up girls, to pick up guys, you know, to hang with their people. Mm -hmm. So the DJ provided a beat for them to dance with. They was happy. And then at some point, and you go into the history books and say who said what and so on, they uh, started putting the, the MC and the DJ together, and the MC would rap over the DJ. But the primary was the DJ. That that his genius. Not these clowns today, man. I mean, 90%, 95% of people today are clowns. They're just doing what they did, what they heard. There's very little creativity. Yeah, there might be some gimmickry, but you know, you take a cat like Grand Wizard Theodore, one of the most humblest cats I ever met, one of the sweetest cats I ever met. He created scratching. Okay, imagine everybody in America has a turntable in that house. Mm -hmm. Everybody, millions of people listening to music. Occasionally, one of the kids will bump into it and it'll scratch over the record. Yeah. Imagine somebody that's so brilliant that they take an instrument like a toaster or a blender and turn it into an art form. That's our genius as hip hop. Our genius as hip hop is to take and make something either out of nothing or reconfigure something. I hear that. And part of reconfiguration of the DJ was where they took classic R&B and soul and, and whatever kind of music, uh, uh, craft work or whatever, they took all, and they'd mix it and section it and reapply it. It was like a collage, it's like a painter taking, you know, uh, wood and steel and, and photography and, and mixing it and making a collage. By the way, I have a book on collage called A Series of Dreams. If you see it, she has a copy. If you see it, you will not believe it. I started it in the year hip hop started, 1974. Uh, I'm sorry, I started in 1967. And I ended in 1974, that the year hip hop started. It's called A Series of Dreams. It's a book of collages that I took with me everywhere I went in the world. And while other cats were getting drunk and getting laid and smacking each other or whatever, I was working on my art. So I've been doing this, think back to 1967. And prior to that, I was painting. And fast forward to when I started seeing the graffiti everywhere that blew my mind. And what happened was I would see this graffiti and it would just blow my mind and two days later it would be gone. So I started photographing it and that's how I got a reputation as Ernie the Photographer. Ernie the Photographer. That sounded nice. Plus you can make $100 in a day. $100 in the 70s? Well, I was like hitting the, the, the lottery. I was like hitting the lottery. And you make $100 a day for seven days, that's 700 bucks. Your rent is 350 for the month. You were, you, make, were you working with artists at that time already? Or? I was doing everything. <clears throat> People come up, oh, I need you to photograph my, my baby. I need you to do this. I need you to do that. It didn't matter what they needed, I would do it. Were you working with the hip-hop community specifically? Or there was, was no hip-hop community. That was still like just There was no the hip-hop community. They're going to lie now and say there was a hip-hop community. There were cats who liked certain things. Yeah. And there were cats who hung out. But there was no, there wasn't even the word hip hop. Mm -hmm. 
Because anybody that took a graffiti artist, a DJ, an MC, and a B-boy and call them hip-hop, they look at you like you had two heads. B-boy's a B-boy. How you how you connecting that, you know, at yeah. the time it was like, now all these revisionists want to go back and say, I created the word hip-hop and hip-hop this. And no, nah, man, a B-boy, if you went to a B-boy jam, it was a B-boy jam. You might have somebody doing some graffiti over on the side. All right. Or you might have a DJ making some noise, you know, and that's how it all came together. And then, you know, uh, you know, they had different songs with the word hip hop in it. And, you know, uh, I think that Gren, who, who got the, the few cats, but I think, uh, who was it got the actual credo for, kudo for creating the word hip hop? Then I uh, love Buck Starsky. Starsky, Starsky. Yeah, like, um, the way it was broken down to me is, like, hip-hop happened. And then uh, later down the road, people realized what it was. It was yes. You know? Like, yes, it wasn't like all of a sudden you say, oh, yeah, th these are the elements. No, the person who did that was Africa Bambada. The person who understood that the connection was the street. The connection was our poverty. The connection was the fact that we was all asked out. The connection was that we were not part of the society. We were the ones that were ridden off. We were the ones that were the last to get jobs, the first to get fired, the last to, to stay in school. We were the street people. We were the dispossessed. And there's a parallel to that in reggae. Reggae came from Shantytown, the shittiest part of Jamaica, where you couldn't even have clean water. Jazz came from whorehouses down south. Blues came from the poorest of the poor, what they call the pork belly. So rock and roll came from Big Mama Thornton, who had a gospel jazz, uh, a gospel blues background, and was poor. Everybody blames, uh, everybody credits uh, Elvis. It was Big Mama Thornton. Go back to the history books. My point is that everything good you know, came from the poor. And the reason that is, we had nothing else and we have 24 hours in a day we got to fill those 24 hours and if you don't have a, a gym membership or you can go to the spa and get a massage or get your toenails a lot of brothers go get their toenails uh, you know pedicures yeah I know my feet look like I've been kicking you know out windows um, my hands look like what I am a working man and an ex-boxer but there's people that like to be pretty and there's people that got the bread to do that. You know, they got the gym membership and this and that, and they go see the, the film festival. A lot of us didn't have shit. A lot of us didn't have nothing. And we're never thinking about getting nothing. But what we had was soul. And what we had was a hunger. And what we had was a need to communicate. And what we had was a need to create. And what we need and what we had was a love for each other. You can't, when you take hip hop, you take love out of hip hop. You take love out of music. You take love out of anything. It becomes a business. Mm -hmm. And businesses are not about nothing. Okay, it's okay if you're making a, a truck to, to carry apples or, you know, you're making a better washing machine. But, you know, business is not going to make art. Mm -hmm. Poverty, hunger, desire, need, love, those are the things that create art. And those are the things that created hip hop. And the proof of that is I could go anywhere in the world walk down the street and people say, who's that cat? I say hip hop and 10 people coming over on my jock and hugging me. And then they look me up on Google and all of a sudden I'm having dinner with a mama son and her 12 kids, you know, from the word hip hop. I go to Brazil, walking down the street, cats come up, look like they're ready to have me for dinner. I say hip hop and they're like, whoa. And we start talking and they're taking me for the next 12 hours all over Sao Paulo, Brazil to show me hidden masterpieces of graffiti and I'm losing my mind because I'm seeing the best graffiti I ever seen in my whole life by using two words hip hop it's like abracadabra that's amazing brother you know hip hop is like those two words are like abracadabra you know open sesame and the wall opens you know yeah I go anywhere in the world and people you know first before I even go anywhere in the world they send me there to pay for my ticket because I am hip-hop and they, you know, whatever. So that's amazing, the word hip-hop.
and the energy from hip hop. But you take love out of hip hop, you don't have hip hop anymore. What you got is it's uh, trap or whatever. You know, these little clown boys are doing now. That's not. That's not. There's no love in that. Mm. You put on a fife, R.I.P. Fife. You put on a tribe called Quest. You put on Daylight. You put on uh, KRS One. You put on uh, anything that got soul and love. You got magic. I work, baby. I work. I get the job done. You know, or oh, Uncle Ricky, you're crazy. You know, hey, let me tell you a story. You know, come on, that's love. That's soul. That's heart. That's energy. And it came from somebody who had nothing. Mm-hmm. They, he wasn't seven foot tall, going to be a basketball player. He wasn't 280 pounds boxer. He was a simple cat, but he had soul and had energy and had a, a freedom what the world needed at, at that time it's like sometimes I think what the world would be like if hip hop didn't exist it would be so corny in the world it, it, would, be be, so it would be more violent because Ben Potter taught us if I want to battle lift it you know I'm pretty good with my hands he's pretty good we can hurt each other end up in the emergency room I want to battle him I'm going to battle him with whatever skills we got mm-hmm. and both of us come out better and both of us smile and even if you whip me or I whip you and I'm giving you the screw face as soon as I turn my back, I said, damn, that was good. <laughs> you know, Word. I'm not going to tell you to your face that was dope, but I'm going to tell my damn, lift it. You did your thing. Jive my, you know. That's what, uh, in, in, uh, in the temple of hip hop, it's like, um, you take a lot of teaching from Martin Luther King, the king, you know, and what he said is eventually we'll be living in a nation like his, I have a dream speech said that, um, you know, we'll be in a nation where people judge each other not by, you know, the color of the skin, but by the content, content of, of their, their character. character. That's the most important thing that you know? was ever said, the content of their character. And that's what I feel like in hip hop, that's why, how people connect when they, they won't judge you by who you are, but what can you do? What kind of skills do you have? What can you bring to the table? Right? What energy do you bring? You know, I walk somewhere and people look at me and they say, well, he's too heavy to be a b-boy. I never seen him with no turntables. He don't have a microphone, he can't be an MC. He don't have a spray can. What the fuck, who is this cat? Then I speak for two minutes and all of a sudden, these are my brothers for life. It's energy, man. And what hip hop is, I'll give you a new definition of hip hop. For the record, capture this jewel. Hip hop is a sacred transference of energy, word. Hip hop is a sacred. <laughs> <laughs> Hip hop is a sacred transformation of energy. Hip hop takes our energy, converts it into art, and our absorption of that art becomes spirit. All right, well, uh, that's mad jewels right there. I feel like uh, you know these questions I have already got more than what I needed, but uh, I mean, can we still uh, get a couple quick? things here sure bro all right um so ernie i got my coffee once i got my coffee i'm okay no coffee the box comes say, out no justice no peace no coffee no interview <laughs> word so i mean you've been coming up to toronto like quite a bit uh in the past couple of years now like it like you just didn't you used to not come up here so much i think right or like is this one of the places you travel to more it's than closer to or? me and there's a lot of energy here and i get a lot of love here and, uh, and coffee and coffee and headaches and heartaches but uh, even the neighbors and the people in the street respond to my vibration and that makes me feel really blessed really blessed and really lifted part of me but um, Not for yeah, respect. yeah I um, I've been coming here Toronto's my second home I may not be coming here anymore for a lot of reasons but uh, Toronto has been my home. No doubt, man. Well, yo, definitely, you know, we love that you come out here and, and, and give us that love. So we try to appreciate as much as we can. And you're saying your trip was action packed. So, you know, hopefully people, they don't take your time for granted, you know? May I say something? Yes. And of course. I could easily be all jiggy and yo, I came up here representing. Now, let me tell you how my spirit is and the humility in it. Anytime anybody praises me or what I do, I always respond the same way. 
And the way I respond is from the heart, and that is, may I always be worthy of that affection, of that respect, of that opportunity to speak and connect. So may I always be worthy, brother. May I always be found worthy. Word, man, and that's something that we all can take example from as well. Brother, I got a thing from the Temple of Hip Hop that'll blow your mind. I think you mentioned that. And there's only two people that I wanted to give it to. And that's you and Sumita. So I gave her a copy. She's going to make you a copy. It has Dougie first, KRS-One, Africa Bombada, Cool Herc, myself, Hard Hitting Harry, who helped found the Temple of Hip Hop, right. and uh, Grandmaster DXT. And the amount of knowledge on it is fucking phenomenal. And you uh, might even be able, and she might be able to, uh, here, this is the cast of character. Oh. Uh, Sick. The mm -hmm. Hip Hop Appreciation Week. You damn. Really? 19, I mean 2000. 2001. It was just before the World Trade Center happened. And that was also the year I spoke at the UNESCO. Yeah. And United they have Nations. Hard Hit and Harry, Reverend Al Sharpton, Karis One. Then Bissa Mishako, who's my sister, DXT, Ernie Panicoli, Siobhan Dean from Rough Riders, Hard Hitting Harry, Dougie Press, who DJ Herc, Africa Bombarder. And this is really a beautiful thing. And anything that you need to hear or know or any questions about hip hop are answered on here officially because these are real brothers and sisters coming from the truth. When you have Karis One, Africa Bambada, Cool Herc, myself, uh, uh, Grandmaster DXT, uh, Dougie Fresh, these are the people who helped breathe life into it and also absorbed it and transfer of energy into a loving thing. So this is a powerful thing. And as soon as I found it, because I was cleaning up my office, as soon as I found it, I thought about you and her because I wanted you guys to have it. That was my gift to you. That That's was my crazy. thank you. Damn. All right, so uh, trust me. That That's my gift. That's my saying thank you to you. That's crazy. Ernie, thank you. You know, like you were just talking about may I be worthy, you know. Yeah, this is, yeah. you know, stuff like this make yeah. me definitely know that it's like, it's like when someone re receive a higher level belt in, in, in martial arts, you have to work. But what, to what have you been that, doing you know I mean? since I met you? You've been doing the work. You've been trying to... Striving. Striving, yeah. you know, definitely. You're trying to find information. You're trying to coordinate the information. You're trying to share with young folks that may not know. So since the minute I saw you, you wanted a, the field workers. You're out there in the field working. And in, in the Zulu Nation, People think you get a, a, a card and, you know, you wear some beads. No, man, it's about work. It's about feeding people mm -hmm. mentally and physically, giving them food, love, energy, and making them go into a different path. Because we can't be on that path no more. We can't hurt each other anymore. We can't, uh, I got all this loot. You know, give me the loot. Give me. We can't do that no more. We got to help feed our brothers and sisters, brother. This is crisis time. At the United Nations, which was in May, just before September, before everything crashed, I gave a warning. Everybody else was talking about hip hop, this and that. I don't have a copy of what I said, but what I said was that there's some brothers, some native brothers living in the mountains who have always never been seen before. They wear white robes and they're brown skinned people, and they came out and they dropped science. I saw the film, I got the film somewhere. These brothers came out and they said, man, the world, Mother Earth is crying. And they didn't speak English, they spoke their, their language. And these are native brothers. And they came out and you see them and you know they're official. And they're all older, and, you know, long white hair, and long white robes. And they'd never spoke to a white man before. And they came out and this was their first time of breaking their privacy and they warned. What was happening? That was in May of 2001. September happened. And, you know, thousands of people, millions of people around the world were killed. And that stuff came from Dick Cheney and not from Osama. It came from, you know, our side, not their side. 
because one of the first things that happened was they called off all the airstrikes. They told everybody to sit and step down. Osama didn't have that power. Etc. 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 Look it up. And it was a grand deception. And people said, why would they do that? Because they made billions of dollars from war. Capitalism can only survive by one means of economic stimulation, which is prison to subjugate the masses and war to feed the economic machine. Those are only two things that help it survive. Control, imprisonment, and war. That's it. And what we're doing is not pro-communist or pro-socialist or anti-capitalist. We're going pro-human. The reason Chris did did uh, human education against, against lies, lies was because he wanted us to get out of that 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 Goodness. orbit yeah. of you know oh we're gonna protest no justice no 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 let's begin by being more human when I see you let me hug you let me give you coffee let me give you a cookie mm -hmm. that's humanism we have enough you know secularism and we have enough religionism oh the Quran says or you know the Bible Chris said man put them shits on the side do you remember he said that he said put them shits on the side them shits are some old books he called them shits <laughs> look it up it's real he said yeah. put them shits on the side we gotta start feeding each other, loving each other. Brother, one thing you know, and Sumita, whether you guys are mad at me, agree with me, disagree with me, I don't care. You can never see me walk into a cipher of people and not get hugged by half of them or three quarters of them before I leave. And when people, when I leave, they're like, whoa, what's just happened? And I'm not talking about communism, socialism, capitalism, money, politics, sexuality, or gay, straight, no, 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 no. Transcending all of that is our humanism. Then you resolve all the individuals. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we need to start focusing on humanism. No doubt, that's like human the education fundamental. against lies. Tries to <laughs> open the eyes. You know, come on, man. And KRS One, there's no reason that there's not a KRS One park. There's no reason there's not a Chuck D Stadium. There's no reason there's not a Slick Rick. Uh, movie center. You think we can have uh, our own like land and potentially uh, like a hip hop city in the future? Like, no, no, no. Because hip hop is not supposed to be isolated. Hip hop is not supposed to be separate. Hip hop should be calculated into our spirit, into our consciousness, and we take it with us into the cities because it came from the cities. Mm -hmm. We take it into us, uh, with us into the reservations. And not this jive shit that, you know, the pro-violent, pro-drug shit. Those cats need a good, you know, body <laughs> check. <laughs> they need a body check. They need a chin check from a brother that may have a little gray, you know, a bit, a little thick in the stomach, but... And believe me, man, I talk, I give the message to the messengers. I step to these cats. I said, you hate your woman, you hate your mama. Oh, who you talk to? Sit down and shut up. Man is talking. You hate your people. Not enough real people to deliver. You use the N word every three seconds. You call your woman everything but sister or, or by her name. Oh, you got a problem? Yeah, I got a problem. It's called your poison in my children's minds. And just like if you put poison in the water of my people, I'd be up on your throat. I said, I have nothing to fear. I've had a long life. You haven't. talk to me like a man or you want to sell wolf tickets you want to see if this old man can do what you know in your heart he can do and then all of a sudden I'm not going to mention no names all of a sudden I got their attention run tell that see yes we do need you know okay word Ernie thank you and each one teach one, share that with your people. Love you and thank you and keep doing your work. And like I told the sister, even when the spirit horse comes to get me, my spirit will still be here if you keep my word alive, my energy alive. I have more years 
time you've been in front of me. 